Tonight, the target type cyber attack spreads to 1,000 businesses. Apple may not have enough screens for the new iPhone, and the hack that made the secret app is not so secret. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 157 for Friday, August 22nd, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Personal Capital. With Personal Capital, you'll finally have all your financial life in one place and get a clear view of everything you own. Best of all, it's free. To sign up, go to personalcapital.com slash TN2. Hello, everyone. I'm Jason Howell. Let's get right to the tech feed. First up, according to a new Department of Homeland Security advisory released today, over 1,000 American businesses have been affected by the cyber attacks that hit the in-store cash register systems at Target, SuperValue, and UPS stores. That's a lot more than previously reported, and Homeland Security says the malware has likely infected many victims who are unaware that they have been compromised. The agency recommends that companies segregate crucial systems such as cash registers from corporate networks and install two-factor authentication. Companies are also being urged to encrypt customers' data from the moment their cards are swiped in the store, log all network activity, and deploy security software that can alert technicians to unusual activity. Reuters is reporting supply chain sources that say Apple suppliers are having a tough time making screens for the next generation iPhone because a redesign of the key component has disrupted panel production ahead of next month's expected launch. Reportedly, sources said display panel production suffered a setback after the backlight that helps illuminate the screen had to be revised, putting screen assembly on hold for part of June and July. Sources say it's unclear whether the situation could delay the launch or limit the number of phones initially available to consumers. Apple has scheduled a media event for September 9th, which is widely expected to be the launch of the new iPhone 6 with both 4.7-inch and 5.5-inch screens. Google has acquired mechanical engineering and product design company Gecko Design, furthering Google's foray into hardware products as well as software. The acquisition price was not disclosed. Gecko Design president Gagne, uh, Jacques Gagne, will join Google X, the company's research lab, along with Gecko's four other employees. The company specializes in developing consumer electronic products. Clients have included Fitbit, Logitech, Sonos, and Hewlett Packard. And Fortune is reporting that U.S. Chief Technology Officer Todd Park is planning to step down from his position by the end of the year, citing sources familiar with the situation. Park is expected to take on a new White House role recruiting tech talent into government roles. And he already has experience in this arena. He recently helped hire former Google executive Mikey Dickerson to help identify and fix government websites. Park originally joined the Obama administration in August 2009 as chief technology officer for the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services after having co-founded healthcare IT companies, Athena Health and Castlight. A White House spokeswoman uh, declined comment, and that's what we have. Now, coming up with all the apps and smart phones out there. How many does the average user download? And next I'll chat with Dante Dorazio from The Verge about how a hack revealed the users of the secret app. But first, managing your money it can be a challenge. The good news is that a free and secure tool called Personal Capital solves two barriers to growing your wealth. The first barrier is that it's hard to keep track of stocks, 401k, bank accounts, all that stuff, all on different sites with different usernames and passwords. The second is that you pay someone to manage it, and you're probably paying too much. Personal Capital brings all your accounts and assets on one single screen on your computer, phone, or tablet with real-time and intuitive graphs. Personal Capital has an award-winning watch app that you can download in Google Play that seamlessly integrates with Personal Capital on other Android devices and provides users with relevant and timely updates on their finances uh, whenever and wherever they need it. 
Personal Capital shows how much you're overpaying in fees and how to reduce those fees. You also get tailored advice on optimizing your investment. So why wait? Signing up takes just a minute and it'll pay big dividends. Personal Capital gives you total clarity and transparency to make better investment decisions right away. To set up your free account, go to personalcapital.com slash TN2. Personal Capital is free and the smart way to grow your money. And we thank Personal Capital for their support of Tech News Tonight. All right, joining me today is Dante Dorazio, reporter with The Verge. It's good to have you on the show, I believe, for the first time. Is that right, Dante? It is. Nice to talk with you, Jason. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. It's good to have you here today. Uh, let's talk about secrets, or rather, let's talk a little the bit about the social... Yes, exactly. The social sharing service, Secret. Many people have checked out the service and shared some of their own most personal anonymized secrets under the assumption that their identities wouldn't be tied to those secrets for their friends and followers to discover. Turns out hackers found a way to uncover the identity behind certain posts. Who is the hacker behind this and how exactly did they pull this off, Dante? Well, it's a white hat group called, um, let me catch the name here. Sorry, it's a uh, Rhino. I, <laughs> uh, but it's a white hat group that's been uh, uh, Secret has decided to have these guys work to have uh, try to find bugs in the service because obviously uh, the whole point of Secret is that the stuff is anonymous. So you don't want to have um, you don't want to have you know people's secrets out there because then the whole basis of the app goes away. Mm -hmm. uh, the name of the group is Rhino Security Labs. Uh, they work with Secret to try and come up with this stuff. And Wired broke the news earlier today. There we go. Now, as you say, in this case, White Hat Hacker uh, Group that approached Secret about this technique, and that's thanks to Secret's own bug bounty program that rewards this information with a payoff. Have there been other security vulnerabilities revealed in this way, and how significant have those been uh, in, in light of this? Well, Google is, is probably most well known for, for this technique. Uh, they run uh, for their Chrome uh, browser and operating system as well. Uh, every year, I believe, they have a program to try to get hackers to, they give them a bounty or, or money to try to break into their software. Uh, and they've had, they went years without having any issues with Chrome. But uh, recently, uh, I believe this past year, they had for the first time, uh, Chrome was, uh, had a vulnerability that Google agreed would be worth uh, the bounty being awarded for. Uh, but it's a pretty well-known technique around the, the tech community uh, to try to you know, you can only have so many people inside your own department and within your own company and startup, especially to to make sure there's nothing wrong with it. And it's nice to have hackers who are willing to give them a, a reason to try to break into your program without having to risk, uh, you know, everyone's information getting out to the wrong people. Oh, no doubt at all. But particularly a service like this that has such highly sensitive information. Now, um, so it's it's a great way to get these vulnerabilities, um, hacks, whatever you want to call them, uh, addressed to the company so that they can do something about it. Uh, have there been other vulnerabilities that have been pointed out? Has Secret addressed this particular vulnerability and kind of closed up uh, the, the workaround that was discovered? Well, they have uh, updated their app today. They pushed out a new update uh, that restricted its uh, access to your photo library on the phone, if I uh, understand it correctly. Uh, but you know, it's it's something that it takes time to do turnarounds and these sorts of things. So, yeah. And uh, finally, and you kind of alluded to this earlier, secret as a service has so much to lose if it finds itself in a position of having to reassure its users that their secrets are safe, won't be revealed somewhere down the line. It really kind of hits at the core uh, promise of secret as a service. Does this signal a larger issue with the longevity of a service like this? The fact that you know, hackers or, or people who are just kind of smarter at working around the system are likely to be drawn to the payload that Secret has, something that's very unique yeah. among social networks? Yeah, that's a good question, Jason. I, I think um, I think it's, it kind of ties into a broader question of, of the expectation of privacy on the Internet. Um, you know, I, when I just signed up uh, the app to, with the new version to see what exactly the terminology they use, and they, and they say you will be completely anonymous. They ask for your phone number and your name, and uh, in the interview today that went up on Wired, they say that they never guarantee you're completely anonymous. So maybe they have to update that language. But <laughs> I think there is, uh, I think there is this sense on the web that you never really are completely uh, anonymous or private or, or nothing secret. And, and that's sort of sad that that's the truth. Um, if you think about, I think it's easy for us in the tech community to think, oh well, this is obvious, right? Like you, secret requires that you have. Um, 
you can only sign up to Secret if you have a certain number of users mm -hmm. uh, that it can pull from. And that kind of happens behind the scenes. That's sort of the, the joy of, of the app is that you don't have to curate a friends list or anything like that. You sign up and it searches your contacts, it searches Facebook, and it just kind of works. And you start getting these secrets. But, um, you know, I think for us in the tech community, it's kind of clear that, you know, you could hack around it like this by making fake contacts that would obviously never post a secret. And therefore, you know, that it has to be this particular user. So uh, to return to your original question, I think, I think it's a concern that, you know, I, well, I would say that I don't think people really expect that it is 100% anonymous. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's not, there's an assumption that what's done digitally is never lost and is never completely gone, especially with, of course, Snowden and the NSA and all that stuff that's been in the news. It's, uh, I, I'm not sure that we, uh, it, it's sort of, a, a comp you kind of assume that you're giving up a bit of your privacy to do this. And, and I think uh, Secret would probably say the same, that that they're not, you know, you're not putting down nuclear launch codes in this app. And, and so it's 100% secrecy, secrecy might not be so important. But uh, they definitely do have to do some rebuilding of trust if they want to uh, make sure people keep, keep on putting juicy details in this app. Yeah, I think the way Secret refers to what you're talking about right there is anonymous, not anonymous. Yeah. It's anonymous. <laughs> yeah. yeah, kind I mean, of. It's uh, the startup uh, mentality. It, I like it. Sure. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, Secret as a Service is going to land where it lands. Um, we'll see how that all turns out. But I really want to thank you, Dante Dorazio uh, from The Verge, for joining me on the show today. Tell people where they can find your work online. Uh, sure, theverge.com. Uh, I'm sure you've heard of it. But if you haven't, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you can spell it. <laughs> Thanks exactly. for having me, Jason. <laughs> Absolutely. We'll have you back. Thank you, Dante. Take care. See you guys. All right. And finally, according to a new study released by Comscore, mobile apps now take up more time than desktop usage or mobile web surfing in the U.S., accounting for 52 percent of the time spent using digital media. Mobile usage as a whole accounts for 60 percent of time spent, while desktop based digital media consumption makes up the remaining 40 percent. So U.S. users must download a lot of apps, right? They they must be, uh, but not so fast. Comscore's Study also shows that two thirds of US smartphone uh, owners download zero apps in a typical month. The top 7% of smartphone owners account for nearly half of all downloaded activity in a given month. Comscore uh, reports that, and that a staggering 42% of all app time spent on smartphones occurs on the individual's single most used app. Top apps include no big surprises such as Facebook, Google, Pandora, and Yahoo. And wow, uh, I, I tend to blow these numbers out of the water on a weekly basis, apparently. Uh, there we go. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to this show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can always write us at TN2 at twit.tv. And don't miss our morning news program. That's Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Jason Howell. Thank you so much for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by CashFly.com.